Hello everyone and welcome back to my series where I'm showing you how you can take your watercolor artwork and turn it into a seamless repeating pattern in Photoshop. Now until this point what we've done is we've painted our motifs, we've removed the background, we've touched them up across the board, and now we're ready to cut them out and isolate them so that we can move each little piece around individually when we go to make our pattern. So with that let's jump right into it. So the next step is going to be to cut out each of these individual motifs and then we can deal with touching up some of these mushrooms. So the way that I isolate my individual motifs is going to be with the lasso tool. So that's just above the magic wand tool here. You can hit the L, that's the keyboard shortcut to get to the lasso tool. Now you'll see, I think the default is just the basic lasso tool, but almost all the time I use the polygonal lasso tool for this case. So this will allow me to just put down some points and let me demonstrate it for you here. <laughs> so I'm going to focus on this first flower up here and the polygonal lasso just lets me put down a few click, 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 and we get to draw a polygon around this flower. And then you can double click to close it off. So this is just way faster than trying to manually kind of draw a circle around this. And remember, since the background is transparent, it really doesn't matter where we select because the only thing that's within the selection is this flower itself. So it doesn't matter what the shape of our selection is. So once we've selected our motif, we're gonna do kind of a familiar keyboard shortcut and that is Command X to cut, Command Shift V to paste in place. So now we can see that this flower is on its own layer. So this may sound tedious, but it helps me a lot to keep my files clean. And what I do is I like to name my layers as I go. So I'll call this one flower one. I know it sounds tedious, but I promise it goes quickly. And then at this point, we basically rinse and repeat. Now, one thing I'll mention before I just kind of speed through this, you'll see that I still have flower one selected. So let me show you what happens. If I tried to select this flower here while flower one is still selected. So at this point, if I try and hit command X, it's going to give me an error and it's going to say, I can't do that. There's nothing there. That's because on this layer one, all that's on that layer is flower one. So instead, what we need to do is say, okay, I hear you. We're going to go back to that motifs layer. And now if we hit command X, this will be able to cut that flower. No problem. Command shift V to paste in place and we'll call it flower two. Then we go back to that motifs layer and we're going to rinse and repeat and do this over and over again. So I'm going to speed through this and just cut out the rest of my motifs. You'll do the same and I'll catch you later once everything's on its own layer. Something I'll say too as we go is again, just for the sake of keeping everything tidy, once I've finished a section like these flowers, what I'll do is I'll select flower one through flower five, hit command G to group them. And I'll just call this flowers. Same with the, I've just called them yellow, these little yellow flowers. I'll select them all, hit command G to group them and call them yellow flowers. I'll do this with everything else as I get going. You'll see I just started my first fern and we'll do that for the ferns and the mushrooms too. All right, back to speed mode. Okay, so now I think we've cut everything out and we can see on that original motifs layer, we just have this one mushroom left here. So we'll just call this one mushroom 19 and call it good. So then we have that lower one selected, mushroom 19. We'll go to the top, hold down the shift key, select mushroom number one to select all of them. Command G to group and I'll call this mushrooms. So now that we have everything cut out, I'm gonna just for the sake of keeping everything tidy once again, I'm gonna take all of my motifs, command G to group these all together, and I'll call it motifs. So that way we have a pretty tidy file here where we have those original merge files, then those working files, and then finally our cleaned up motifs. Now there's just a couple of additional cleaning things that we can do if we want. Now this is extraneous. You don't have to do all of this. This is just stuff that I like to do to make mine look kind of as tidy as I can. So first we're gonna deal with some of these saturation issues. And this I'm actually just gonna do on a one by one basis. So for example, we can take this mushroom here, which I feel like is 
just a little too saturated and we might be able to just fix this with a little saturation adjustment so if we select that mushroom the keyboard shortcut for the selection tool is v so if you just hit v and then click that mushroom then we can use our command u to get to that hue and saturation panel so i'm just going to be looking at the rest of these over here for reference and i'm going to tone down the saturation just a bit and already like that i feel like it fits in with the ferns a bit more. Now we can play with the lightness too. If we wanna make it lighter or darker, definitely not too much darker because something that I've noticed is the less a motif stands out, the better in terms of not being able to kind of see your repeat really easily. So I'm just gonna to toy with these a little bit. And I feel like we're at a better place. I feel like that kind of fits in with our ferns a little bit better. So similarly, we're just gonna select this next one, Command U, and I'm gonna tone down that saturation quite a bit, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe about like that. Now, whether I wanna bring the brightness or the lightness up, maybe a little. All right, I think that's a little better. I think this blue one is also a little bit much. So same thing, let's tone down that saturation. Now this one I definitely wanna make lighter. I don't want it to stand out so much. So these mushrooms are all gonna be kind of in the, in the light realm and I am okay with that. I don't want them to be super, super in your face. Same thing here, Command U. We can probably just get away with turning down the saturation on that one. Um, same thing here. Now that one, we're gonna wanna bring up that brightness a little, and move this so you can see what we're looking at, but we'll bring up that brightness so that we can kind of fit that color scheme. I'm happy with that. Command U here again. Um, maybe there was a sweet spot in there. Eh, maybe a little too much. Okay, that's not too bad. Maybe finally, eh, I'll turn, I'll play with that one just a tiny bit slightly decrease the saturation and a tiny bit on this blue one just to make everything blend together okay I do feel like we're telling a somewhat more consistent color story now with these changes so I'm happy with that so I really hope you found that helpful. We're at a very exciting stage now because now we are so close to ready to actually turning these paintings into a pattern. So stay tuned because that is coming very, very soon. But in the meantime, if you haven't seen all of the other videos in this series, I would definitely recommend starting from number one where I show you my best tips for painting using watercolors with pattern making in mind. And then I take you through all of the other steps from setting up your files, removing your background, touching up your motifs, and bringing us all the way to today's video. So with that, I will see you very soon in the next video in this series. Take care, everyone.